Good morning to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Anybody feeling salty this morning? Anybody feeling salty? Please turn with me to your Bible to Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Good morning to all you guys who are here. Good morning to our visitor. Good to see you, Laurie. Thank you for, um, thank you for um, worshiping with us this morning. We thank God for what he's doing. Amen. We thank God for, um, for, our, for our newest member, Sister Porter. We thank God that you made community church to God, your church home. And we celebrate God with you. Amen. Once you have that in your Bibles, Matthew chapter 5, verse, verse 13, I guess you will stand on your salty feet this morning. Amen. You like that, Deacon German? <laughs> Amen. It says, you are the salt of the earth. What good is salt if it loses its saltiness? The NLT said, if it loses its flavor. Um, can it be made salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled under the foot, uh, uh, underfoot as worthless. May God continue to bless His word. You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. What good is salt? A salt is no longer salty. Amen. What What good is salt? The word of God says, "Salt lose its flavor." As we continue in the series titled "Salty." Part two, um, 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 the second installation of our salty series is titled Flavor. It is titled Flavor. It is titled, it is titled Flavor. I've been um, on, a, on a whole um, um, preaching tip, if I could say, because why? Because I don't want us to just be so excited about all these great things that God is blessing us with, but we don't know how to live. Uh, wouldn't it be such a disappointment to dance and run around in these fog and lights and die and go to hell? <laughs> right? So not on my one. I'm going to do my part. You do your part. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to teach the word of God how he gave it to me. Your part is to live it as the Holy Spirit lead. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so, so part two, flavor. Um, um, by the raising of hand, who likes flavorless food? Okay, only CJ. There's only that one person in class, right? You know what I mean? Oh, going to raise the hand. Nobody goes to the restaurant and say, can you give it to me with no flavor? No, no, and no seasoning. The reason we go to KFC is for the 13 herbs and spices. Amen? We, um, 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 we all love flavor. We all love seasoning. Even if you're from a different culture, and your skin color is not as melanin as ours, when we go to the company potluck, you know, once upon a time before COVID, we used to do this thing called potluck, right? Crazy. You remember? People used to cook at their house. Nobody questioned the cleanliness, the cleanliness of your house, but we just eat them from other people's food, not knowing uh, if they have cats or nothing. That was before COVID. You guys, you guys don't know nothing about potlucks. But back in the day uh, before COVID, when we used to have a potluck, if it was a multicultural um, um, place in a multicultural audience, it was awful being, being eaten first. Why? Because of the flavor. Right? Right? Uh, because of the saltiness of it. Um, uh, because how we let that thing marinate for a few days. Amen? Amen? But, uh, because we pass down secret um, 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 recipes from, from, from generation to generation. I just hope that the taco soup don't stop right there. But it, it is getting passed down. Right? So then, um, but the word of God says the way um, salt flavored food this is your job for the world. Amen. The way that we value flavor in our food, this is your calling to be flavor to the earth. Now my question, and then it asks this question to you, and if you're not adding flavor to the world, what good are you? If you are not adding flavor to the world, what good are you? There's, the only purpose now is to 
throw you on the ground so you could be trampled upon. If, you, if you're not doing, you ready for this? If you're not doing what you was created to do, then what are you doing? Um, 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 I have a car now. I have my wife keep asking me, what are you going to do with this car? Call the junkyard. Why? Why? Because it's not doing what it was meant to do. So what's the purpose of it just holding up space? Can I make you upset a little bit? There were some of you, you are in here just taking up space. Oh, oh y'all not coming back next week. How can you say that? Why? Because you're sitting here not doing what you was born to do. Not doing what you were called to do. We make an altar, we open doors. You know there's a calling on your life. You know there's a greater purpose, but yet you're just sitting here taking space. Yeah, you look good, you smell good, you sing the song, but yet there is so much more for you to do. If you are not adding flavor, then what are you doing? And the Word of God says, we might as well just trample upon you. Because what you was created to do, you're not doing. And then... And then he goes even more scarier. He goes even more scarier. It says if his, um, um, uh, if his loss is flavor. There were some of us, we used to have flavor. We used to be salty. We used to be on fire for God. We used to live right. We used to pray. We used to fast. We used to serve. Did something happen? We got comfortable. Something happened. We got offended. Something happened. Now we are just losing our flavor. Oh man, right, let me get home, go ahead and get and get to my sermon. So, no one likes flavorless food. We have been called for a purpose. It is to add flavor to this world. Amen. If we're not adding flavor to this world, then simply, what are you doing? What are you here for? If you used to add flavor, you used to be on fire for God, and you no longer don't. What are we doing? So now the question that should be going to, to everybody in mind now is that, Pastor Jeffrey, how do we add flavor? How do we add, how do we add flavor? This morning, I got you. To, um, 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 this morning, we are going to speak about five spices. Five spices to put in that gumbo. Five spices to put in that soup. Five spices to put in that, put into the earth so that we could go ahead and, um, 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 add flavor to it. If I could, if, if you could bring that up for me, please. So now, here go, simple answer. So how do we add flavor? We add a flavor to the earth. You ready for this? What's well, Sister Neil? It's good to see you. I'm my note takers. We add flavor to the earth by being the example. The word of God says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse, um, um, um verse chapter 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12, it said, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set the example. Be the flavor. Be the difference of a maker. How do you set the flavor? How do you be different? Um, in speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. This morning we're going to talk about five spices. Well, what time is it? This morning I'm going to try to talk about five spices. Oh, uh, okay, you ready? So now, the world represents a gumbo. The world, it, it represents a soup. It represents it represent a dish. Uh, what's um, your favorite meal? Talk to me. What's the meal that needs more spices than mac and cheese? I heard oxtail. We're going to go oxtail. Brown stew chicken. That's good. All right, then, bouillon. You're happy I said it? You're happy I said it? All right, then, so... so so, so beef stew. Thank you, Dr. I was thinking, like, how you say we in English? So, um, so now I have that. And this is the world mixed with different kind of people, different kind of mindset, different kind of cultures, different kind of beliefs. Even, the, even people who, who, who have the name Christianity share different, share different kind of belief. And the word of God says, in this world, in this, in this melting pot, you ought to be the flavor. And the first ingredient, the first, uh, the first spice, you taking notes with me? Yeah, yeah. 
the first spice, the first spice that God calls us to use to add flavor into this world is the spice of speech. The spice of speech. The word of God said, be the example um, 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 for, the, uh, for the believers in speech. In speech. So let me do In the soup, in this gumbo, as we turn in it, as we cooking it, the word of God says this, the first seasoning, the first, the first, uh, the first spice, it should be on how you talk to somebody. You don't believe me. Fine, fine, fine. So I got it. In Colossians 4 and 6, it said, let your speech, or let your speech always, um, always be with grace, you ready, and season with salt. Well, well, it's saying this, it's saying this, your speech ought to have a flavor. Your speech ought to have a taste. Your speech ought to have some, um, some kind of texture, some kind of flavor to it. And it says, fine, there's no need to guess how, you, how should your speech be flavored, but your speech should be flavored with grace and seasoned with salt. What does that mean? You're being too deep and spiritual. We shouldn't be trying to cut everybody's head off of every little thing. Amen. I mean, I'm going to talk just to my church folks. Is that okay? Amen. People should know that you are Christian just by the way you speak. Yes. Just by the way you speak. I mean, if we speaking like everybody else, then what's the difference? But the word of God said we should be speaking with grace. It should be, um, um, it should be some forgiveness. Um, um, if there's anywhere that we're allowed to make a mistake, it should be in the church. We should feel like if we come to the church and we make a mistake, we won't get our head bitten off. Because I know someone will talk to me with grace. Someone will talk to me seasoned with salt. Um, um, someone will show me love. I I know that the speech ought to be seasoned with grace and seasoned with salt. They ought to know who we are by our speech. And the word of God said also say this. It says, um, it says, let no unwholesome talk come out your mouth. Let no unwholesome talk come out your mouth. Ephesians 4.29. So now what that means is this. So then if we end, if we add an environment, right, and, and, and everybody else cussing, the Christian should be cussing, should not be cussing as well. I mean, I, um, um, I, think, I think a cussing Christian is a foolish Christian. I think a cussing Christian is a foolish Christian. Because why? Because that same person who you're engaging with in profanity Right there, you stop the opportunity to engage them in worship. Because when God presents the opportunity to witness to them, they're going to just remember, but the last time you were just cussing that person out with me. We was practicing how to talk about their mom. Like, you want to tell me about Christ? Like, it doesn't work, but yet our, yet our words our language, it should be seasoned with salt. And then, then, then if you feel offended, then stop cussing. Yeah. <laughs> right? So then, so, but then, so it should be, um, it should be seasoned with grace, seasoned with salt. It should be no wholesome talk. You ready for this? God gave me this, this, this morning. And our speech, it should be your worship. Amen. What are you talking about, Pastor Jeffrey? The word of God said in the same Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19, it says, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, songs from the Spirit, um, um, sing and make music from, the, um, from your heart to the Lord. But it says, when you are addressing each other. That means even when we speak to each other, there should be a worship on our lips. Even when we speak to, you, to each other, it should, be, it should be a worship on our lips. So now, we are called to be the salt of the world. Part of being the salt of the, um, salt of the world is add flavor to it. So we understand that we're going to speak about five spices. And the first spice this morning is what? That was so weak. Thank you, Verita. The first spice this morning is what? Speech. Uh, um, so now, I hope you guys still don't use this kind of salt, okay? 
and you wonder how come your blood pressure up, you still use this kind of salt. If you're not using sea salt or that pink Malaysian salt, is that how it's called? Then however it's called, you know, but <laughs> if, we still, if we're still using this salt, don't, don't, don't talk about it, it just tastes good. So now, we, so we making, so God created this earth in this American pot. He said, I created it, but I created you to add flavor to it. How do you add flavor to it? Through your speech. People are talking about how we do. Gas prices up. I trust God he would never fail me or let me down. With my speech, I seasoned the world. People say, oh, this next generation, oh, man, this next generation, we, oh, man, they, they, they got it all messed up. No, I trust God that the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God who will bless from generation to generation. I never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging for bread. That's a generation break. So you could talk your talk, but I'm going to season the world. With, with my language. We ought to speak world. I, I feel like sometimes, oh my goodness, I'm going to get in trouble. I feel like sometimes we just run our mouth so much that we just start talking and talking and we begin to babble. And we are saying things not knowing that, that, that we are talking death when God called us to um, speak life. Amen. God called us to use our words Amen. as seasoning. Seasoning with grace. Seasoning with salt. Let no unwholesome talk Come out your mouth. But every time you speak, every time you talk to somebody, it should be a form of worship. Yes. Our second spice. You ready? Yes. Anybody remember the Spice Girls? So then uh, they have nothing to do with nothing. I'm sorry. So then, um, um, so then, um, see? Oh, the things are coming out your mouth, right? So then, um, so then our second spice is conduct. It's conduct. Be the example for the believer in speech and conduct. How you act, it matters. Amen. So there are some of us, we got the speech down, right? We could talk, right? Right? But how you act matters. How you carry yourself matters. How you, how you react to, to stressful situation, it matters. The word of God says, only, con um, only conduct yourself in a matter that is worthy of the gospel of Christ. We are called to be gospel spreaders. We are called to be sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. We are called to be letting someone know this is what God has done, um, done for me. And God said, you should be living a life that is worthy of that calling. How you live in your life matters. How you talk matters. How you live matters. Can I hurt somebody's feelings? And you say, that's just how I talk. That's just how I am. It is not an excuse to be living an ungodly life. When someone redirects you and your response is, that's just how I talk. That's just my faith. What you are seeing is, Christ dying on the cross had no power. Because how? Because you accepting him, but you're denying his power. And it is through the power of the Holy Spirit we are able to change. So when you say, I just can't change, that's just how I am, you are saying that, um, that the cross have no power. You are saying the cross has no power. So the second spice is our conduct. How we live it. Um, uh, the way I said that someone ought to know that you are a Christian by the way you speak, someone should know that by your speech. Um, 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 but the way you live, it confirm it. The way you live, confirm it. You got people talk a good game, right? 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 You got um, 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 people who only talk in pleasantries. You know, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm too blessed to be stressed. God bless you. We do that. All the, but yet, the way you treat your wife, the way you treat your husband, the way you treat your kids, the way you treat your brothers and sisters, that's how you season the world. So now, if I'm getting treated bad at my job, I'm getting treated bad at school, why would I come to church to get treat, treated bad by some more people? If they mean to me out there and they mean to me in here, 
why should I come in here? I'm preaching okay? And the word of God says, so in this world, and this, and this soup I created, and, and, this, and, this, and this gumbo I created, I needed to have flavor. And that's what I created you for. So flavor it with your speech. Flavor it with your conduct. And flavor it with your third spice as my iPad on love. With your love. With your love. Love is a spice. Love, 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 love is a mom, um, is a mom, is a mom, a flavor. This past Wednesday, I got an opportunity to go ahead um, and to officiate uh, um, the renewal vows of our mom, of Nadine and Rodney. Wait for me, and Nadine, let me know if you're crazy, right? <clears throat> and my whole message was keep on loving each other. Keep, keep on. You want me to tell you how not to get divorced? I'm going to blow your mind. You ready? Please. Keep loving each other. Right? Keep loving each other. Because why? If I love you, I, I talk to you in love. If I love you the way um, I conduct myself with you is love. If, if I love you, I won't do nothing to hurt you. And, and I know cheating will hurt you. I know lying will hurt you. I know, I know abusing you will hurt you. And you don't, you don't, you don't hurt what you love. I remember... Thank God that we don't say this nonsense anymore, that love hurts. Can I say stupid on the pulpit? That is the most the stupidest thing I ever heard, that love hurts. Is that supposed to? Is that supposed to? Is that supposed to? But they should know who we are. We should be adding love to the world. The word of God says, now, um, now these three, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. God call us to have hope. God call us to have faith. God call us to have love. But he said the greatest out of all of these is love. And this is Paul speaking, but when did Paul get this idea? He got it from Christ himself. When they was asking Christ, what the greatest commandment out of all the commandments of Moses, out of all the law, so now these were just religious folks, people who just trying to work and do the right thing and work their way to heaven. You know we can't work our way to heaven, right? You know the word of God said our righteousness is like filthy rags. So, and I say that, this is just a side note. This is for my sermon in two months. There is some of us, we are um, um, running ourselves ragged trying to work for something that God gave us freely. That was a bar, Doug. And what you should be working on, God gave it to you freely, but your work it should be in the sanctification part. Amen. Now, knowing that you are saved, salvation is yours. It's a freely, it, it, it's a free gift. Now, how do you grow your faith? How do you grow your maturity? How do you come from milk to meat? That's, that's a little time. But they ask Christ, what's the greatest commandment? And God, and Christ thinking, you you stuck on commandments. You you stuck on rules and guidelines. You stuck on bylaws. You stuck on you stuck on you ready for this? Religious stuff. But the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart. Then they're like, no, no, no. That's not enough. You gotta, you gotta give me something more than that, Jesus. They're like, no, no, no. That's not enough. You gotta give me more than that, Jesus. To know at the greatest, if you want a number two, love your neighbor like you love yourself. Because why? Because God understands that this world I created is a wicked world. 
But I need you to add flavor. But the way you add flavor is through love. It will be flavorless. It, it, it would not taste right. It would be something missing if we did not have the love of Christians. They, they know who we are by our speech. Right? Right? It's confirmed by our conduct. But they are attracted to us by our love. They believe us by the way we love. Let me ask you this, saints of God. How are you loving? How are you loving? If you're only loving the people who you live with, that's easy. If you're only loving the people who believe what you believe, that's easy. But God is calling us to love the unlovable. God is calling us to love the unlovely. God is calling us to love the people who don't serve the same God as us. God is calling, oh, here's is where I get in trouble. God wants you to love the addict. God wants you to love the drunk. God wants you to love the lesbian. God wants you to, uh, to love the homosexual. God wants you to, uh, okay, that's easy, right? Here's good way the church get quiet. God wants us to love the pedophiles. God, uh, see, God wants us to love the murder. Of course you're not going to clap. Because why? Because that's where we draw the line. But God, but God don't tell them this is who you don't love. But God said to love the neighbor, to love the world. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If we are to be like Christ and have the same call that God on us, we are to be the most loving people in the world. This is how we add flavor to this world. The rejects, the forgotten, the widowers, the orphan. We call to love them. And not only in speech, but love them in action. Love is a verb. Love is a verb. Love is an action. Love, love is more than just... Um, I, I, I didn't just say it. Um, 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 my son, he put me um, on front street, and whenever we driving and we may um, 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 drive by, by a homeless person, he said, Daddy, you're not going to give them no, no money? <laughs> I got to check my okay. check. Because uh-uh. why? Because he see his mother and his father do it. Well, more than, more than, his mother. I don't care. I, I must cash out of that. But his mother thought him, this is your responsibility. If you have and someone don't, out of love, you show them love. Freeze! Y'all ready for a pop quiz? The first spice. The second spice. The third spice. No. Ooh, y'all get an A plus, guys. Yeah. And my last two one are faith. Your faith is a spice. It's a flavor. There is some of us, the reason someone, the reason someone would never give their life to Christ because they see how much faith that you don't have in him. If you're scared of what I'm scared of, why should I serve your God? If you don't believe God, if you don't believe this big God uh, for this small thing, why should I serve him? We ought to be the example of our faith. We should, man, I'm going to tell you this. We, saints of God, we should be able to shift this culture only through our faith. By believing that God can do it. By believing there's nothing that he cannot do. It is, it is our faith that made this different. I have the story that I've been holding for years. And I'm even kind of, I'm kind of nervous to say it. Because you might don't believe me. Because you might say I got it from somebody else. But this is a true story. The year is probably, what year I graduated? 06? Year probably 2008. I'm working on, I'm working on the old Starbucks that used to be in the Lake Small. People don't know, but Lakes actually have a mall that, that um, on 441 in Oakland, that strip little plaza. They call it Lakes Mall. That's funny, right? But then it used to be a Starbucks in there, right? And one day, a person's car died. 
right? And they act, if anyone have, have, them, um, have um, jumper cables, I said, I don't, but I think I can start a car. For those of you guys who don't know, 2008 Jeffrey was nuts. There was nothing I didn't believe God for. So I went there. She popped her hood. By the way, 2008 Jeffrey and 2022 Jeffrey have one thing in common. Know nothing about cars. So (laughs) engine pop. Look at the engine. Okay. Quit the engine. It's not starting. Oh, okay. I, I do that. You know what I mean? So, so now, after a few, after a few minutes, something, something came upon me. They're going to think I took it from Kevin Gates. No, I did it first. I laid hands on her battery and prayed. And she looked at me like crazy. She said, how are they going to start it? I said, I believe God going to do it. So now, David, everybody want to know, did the car start? Yes, it did. You want to know the thing that's so sad? As Christians, we have a superpower. It's called faith. You have a superpower. It's October. Women, I hope you're doing self-examination. But God, for, God forbid, if something don't feel right, you could pray on that tumor right then and there and dissolve it. We have a superpower. Still go to your doctor. You know what I mean? Don't, don't hear that. Hear me. But we have a superpower. And it's called faith. And she asked me, she said, but what to do the next time it dies? Do what I did. I should have said go to the mechanic, but because our faith ought to be contagious. And that same Starbucks, that was one of the Magic Johnson Starbucks because because his goal was he liked fine coffee. How can I get fine coffee in underserved in urban area and and one of those um one of the Starbucks ended up in a lot of the lakes. Right, so while they was there, there was high and high insecurity, and they kept saying, um, we need to be careful, I would never get robbed. I told them, I said, as long as I'm working here, we would never get robbed. <laughs> 2008 Jeffrey was kind of arrogant too, by the way. So I um, said, we, we never going to get robbed. So how do you know that? Cause I believe it. I said, I pray before I come to work every shift. I left that job probably 2010, probably two months after that, gunpoint. Not saying that it happened because I left, you know, I, I'm not saying that. I'm, I'm really am. But you know, I'm <laughs> <laughs> But what flavor did I add at that job? I had a faith. If I said something, it was not a question. I believed it, and I stand on it. What flavor are you adding in your job, at your home, at your school? Faith. You see? And I can't even um, go ahead and fabricate a story because now I have a classmate who went to school with me. I was just as crazy in high school. I believe God for it. What are you believing God for? And you want to know what's different? From this spice than the other spices, this spice right here, faith, faith is contagious. Faith is contagious. Because why? They see you believe something for impossible. Then they see God do it. The one my old church had, there's no secret what God would do. If he did it for me, my God, he would do it for you. Faith. Faith is contagious. Faith is contagious. And my last spice, and this is the spice that people don't like in their food. Uh, 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 and this is the spice that's, um, um, that's some, um, the clover um, 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 of the spice. Um, and you guys don't put clover in your rice. No, that's on the ancient thing, right? 
No, no, you got to find out who that is, right? Oh, you do right there? Okay. So, 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 Clover, uh, um, um, uh, Clove. My wife could not me, okay? I'm trying my best up here. <laughs> so, so, it's the spice that adds the flavor. It's something special about it. But if you make a mistake and you chew that thing, You be want to throw the whole plate away. I don't even want to eat anymore. <laughs> but it's important. It add a flavor. What I'm disappointed about, the church has made purity a clove. Well, I didn't know. See, uh, see, my youth pastor, Tina Kelvin, used to talk to us about purity. We even had something with Pastor who bring, and we gave our symbols of purity ring, and it was important to go ahead and to save yourself from marriage. Well, I didn't know that in the church, they only applied to teenagers. It, it blows my mind that because you grown and you divorced, you think you can still sleep with people who's not your husband and your wife. What's your, oh, good, it's children, children, so I could go nuts. You, what make you think that purity have an expiration date? It's the, cra- it's the craziest thing to me that, that, that we are a couple, and we are a couple who come to church together on Sunday, but yet we sit with each other on Mondays. That is not what God is calling for. That is not holiness. It, I don't understand that how and where we made up on us, uh, we made up by ourselves in our own mind that you age out of purity. Well, y'all thought these lights were gonna go ahead and make me preach feel good in sermons. Purity is a spice. And I could even go as far as say it's a spice that the world no longer have a taste for. And if they don't get that spice from the church, if they don't get the spice from believer, where would they get the spice from? Now, we, I'm also not going to make the mistake and only connect purity to sex. Right? Because Purity doesn't mean not having sex. Because there are some people who is virgin but not pure. Right? But what? Purity means not being mixed with anything else. Right? Holy means pure. Not being mixed with anything else. Right? I mean, it is, it is 100% proof. No chaser. No, no, no like additive. It's just, it's just organic. It, it is what it is, right? The disappointing thing, I'm doing the long trick here because I want you to get this, to see how many believers are no longer pure. We have mixed Christianity with other things. Listen, I love my African part of me. I am black unapologetically. But I'm not praying to my ancestors. I'm not doing nothing to make nobody proud. I'm, I'm. Yes, sir. Dr. Hines, can I tell the truth? It's witchcraft. Whenever you tap to any other power to get a result, it is witchcraft. Y'all heard me say it before. Sage, crystals, ancestors, all that thing there, it is tapping into other powers to get a result that we ought to get from God. Right? Now, the scary thing is the new age have entered into the church. So let me make it clear for community church of God. 
We don't believe in third eyes. We don't believe in ancestors. We don't believe in different spirits. We don't pray to the saints. We don't even have a white skinny man on the cross because we don't believe in all that. That's the flavor. That's the taste. I'm not going to compromise it. But God is calling us to live a pure life. A pure life. Since y'all got me excited, if you're going to be sleeping with people and grabbing a mic, you can't sing on uh, uh, the play scene. If you're going to be sleeping with people and come dance in front of here, you can't dance. Across the board, you can't touch a light, you can't hold a door, you can't even be a greeter. Because this is the sanctuary. Let me tell you what happened. This is how serious God is. God had the ark of God, which was a holy thing. The ark of God was about to fall over. Someone who loved God so much went to touch the ark so it don't fall. And he died. Why? Because his hand was not clean. God is calling us to live in purity. God is calling us to live in love. God is calling us to have proper conduct. God is calling us to have the, a proper speech. I believe, I thank God for grace. Grace is necessary. But yet, we have, uh, I'm going to stop saying we. There were some churches who have built, built a church and a doctrine only on grace. And no longer teaching, there's a standard of God. There's a standard. Coming to church and paying tithe is not enough. But God is calling us to live a certain kind of life. And he said, be the example. Be the seasoning. Be the salt. Be the flavor. And how do you do that? For your speech. Your conduct. Your, did I say faith? I skipped faith. I did. Oh, so I did faith. Sorry. Love. Faith. Purity, conduct, all those five seasoning. And you can't pick and choose which one of them you're going to live in. You can't pick and choose, I'll do this, but I won't do that. You know what I mean? I, you know about it? I'll be pure, but my speech is, is unpure. I, um, 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 I'll talk the talk, but, I, 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 but I, won't, I won't walk the walk. I won't have the right. No. But this is why it's important. Because people are going around in this potluck, picking different items and different plates. We ought to create a dish that have all five other seasoning so they can drink. You ready? I'm ready for my conclusion. Then when they take the dish with all five seasoning, they can say, oh, Taste and see. That the Lord is good. Everybody standing to your feet.